Hi, we are at the Dhaka Global Dialogue and uh, I have with me uh, Laura Yerekeshwa, Erek Deputy Director of the International Affairs Institute of Oriental Studies, Almaty, Kazakhstan. And uh, Kazi Anis Ahmed, columnist and media publisher and Director, Dhaka Literature Festival. We just had the Literature just Festival did. over here. I am Kanchan Gupta, I am from ORF and today we'll talk about local culture and how what is local or what was local is no longer local, it has now become a cross-border culture and uh, in this age of technology, and we call it the age of Netflix. Anis, we were talking about uh, Local culture is something which is local-specific. It is people-specific. It is society-specific. It is community-specific. But when you take it out and you try to make it go global, how does that work? Does it still remain sensitive to its origin, its originality, or does it just become something which is... Uh, you know, peppered and something which is made uh, attractive for a larger audience, but it no longer remains culture. I think initially we will definitely see a lot of distortion because uh, if we take the example of Netflix, it's uh, still a relatively new platform. It's making possible a certain kind of production and engagement that wasn't quite there before. It has uh, more of uh, instantaneity, accessibility. Um, I'd give two quick examples. Uh, even in literature, which now we think of as a very dated form, we've actually faced this problem. I, for example, if you take a novel like uh, The Sheltering Sky by Paul Bowles, to me that's the ultimate example of the kind of novel that used the colorful backdrop of, quote, ethnic or some other locale for ultimately anxieties of white people adrift in the world. And even in movies, we've seen that the distant uh, places getting used as backdrop. Right now, Netflix is making a movie called Dhaka with Chris Hemsworth as the main character. And it's going to focus around something like a terrorist attack. But it's all about, uh, I think, the son of a big Indian businessman becoming hostage and a white guy coming in to do the rescue. I can tell you offhand that this film is likely to raise a lot of eyebrows in Dhaka. No, we have faced this, a very similar problem in India, in fact, not once, but on several occasions, when something which is supposed to be based on a real-life incident becomes a very distorted version. And uh, But we were I was more on what it is doing to indigenous culture. Uh, we had... Uh, uh, Laura was telling us how culture, identity, politics... Uh, society they are all very closely interlinked yeah and uh, when you when you try to sort of telescope it into the digital world yeah uh, what does that do to identity politics yeah. society in your view what happens so what happens in nowadays as you mentioned in the age of netflix <laughs> in the times of digital transformations we have our identity uh, at one side, we have a dual process. Identity is forming, shaping, still constructing every time. On the other side, we have our this so-called primordial, uh, basic subconsciousness identity below, uh, relating us to particular culture. And we, uh, irrespectively of whether we uh, show or would like to show or would like to hide it, doesn't matter. It means that uh, identity, while person communicating with the uh, in, uh, enlarging global community, uh, through the social network, through their colleagues or through the TV, uh, they would like to convey their own part of its, uh, himself or herself. So it means that identity is uh, on the other side is dissolving, on the other side is consolidating. It's a dual process. And with this, we need to know how to construct our relations, uh, to build our re relations with the other, with other parts made of social groups. For, uh, for this, I think we need to uh, elaborate sort, sort of uh, dialect mechanism or competences or skills which relate to culture. Right, Anis, uh, you know, but it's, culture is more than just cinema. 
culture is more than just television reality show or netflix for that matter uh, in bengal your part of bengal my part of bengal a lot of local culture has been eroded it has been corrupted and it much of it doesn't even exist anymore and that did not happen in the age of netflix that just happened because uh, uh, the way people started perceiving culture so how do you how do you deal with it because this erosion is now going to get uh, faster by the day it's um uh, that's absolutely right for example uh, in in our part of bengal and possibly in west bengal a very popular culture form was what's called the jatra it's yes a, i I, musical, i had that in mind it's a it's a form of uh, musical theater that folk was theater. folk theater and very musically based or uh, usually there's a lot of uh, very strong sometimes mythical elements sometimes contemporary elements come into it and especially in the winters even when i was a child this used to be a dominant form in especially the rural areas villagers would stay up night after night watching uh, jatras that were touring the country and and passing through that has now possibly been replaced by television because tv has now penetrated to the rural level to those same households so what i feel is that on the one hand this is also not a new phenomenon even through the centuries many forms have died and new ones have come in and that has not necessarily left culture weaker uh, again taking a literary a- analogy the epic form of poetry has kind of died away but it was replaced by the novel which had its own appeal and contemporary strength similarly even as jatra has died off other narrative forms have come in its place which spoke to the contemporary and especially urbanizing culture very strongly certainly on the bangladesh side so at some level i think there is some room for worry with a uh, new phenomenon like netflix or similar digital platforms which will initially create a distorting effect as a lot of content tries to cater to new audiences that are opening up and and pandering to that but at the same time uh, i think new voices new artists will come forward with strong content that is able to demand uh, the attention of those audiences uh significantly more on their own terms but it takes time for that kind of evolution to uh transpire laura have you also sensed this kind of shift happening with your local culture what was traditionally yes considered to be culture absolutely and just following your ideas i would like to say that when person starts working and talking in the much larger milieu audience towards opening itself and it comes uh, with this comes new narratives and that's why individual want to show himself herself as a new player actor and he can do or she can do everything and with this comes blogging and chatting and showing uh, oneself as a, you know a sort of uh, a new phenomenon however in uh, as far as central asia is concerned we also just uh, can could uh, um Uh, see this uh, changing or shifting this paradigm when the old traditional uh, indigenous cultural forms uh, slowly fading away but not uh, completely disappearing just they to have this taken in other forms like for example the old historical uh, uh, narratives and uh, poems uh, could take another uh, i mean uh, may have another um, forms on tv on tv show or like uh, for example in kazakhstan we have such uh, traditional uh, competition of poets Uh, like artists mm. uh, they are improvising during the competition and they play on the traditional instruments and they create some something new new atmosphere new air and these traditional forms now becoming transformed into new like a pop uh, pop culture or uh, tv culture as uh, performing of some teams and trying to over uh, i mean it's kind of uh, it's sort of uh, culture uh, we could uh, we could uh, um, witness the renewal of the or rejuvenation of the culture rejuvenation of the culture however uh, in totally absolutely new perhaps more global forms uh, trying to appeal to more global audience however trying to keep in itself local ingredients which make them specific and this we began with uh, how technology is increasingly playing a role right uh, in uh, terms of shaping 
content and form yeah. of what we can broadly refer to as culture. This also suggests that there is scope for uh, technology playing an interventionist role. So they could, with sustained use of technology, redefine uh, the idea of Bengali culture in yeah. Bangladesh. Yeah. And this could be done from thousands of kilometers away from Bangladesh, yeah. which in turn could redefine how politics is shaped over here yeah. or how society evolves over here. Does that worry you? A little bit, but not too much because, you know, this is something we are watching already. We are seeing certain patterns emerge. So, for example, in Bangladesh right now, because Netflix is on a, a subscription model, the really dominant uh, digital platform is actually YouTube. And there are young Bangladeshis, to name a few, uh, Rabah Khan, Nabila Noor, Salman Muktadir, who have huge following on YouTube for their performances, their commentary. And there is a certain kind of, let's say, quote, cultured uh, person uh, from an older generation who think that these kids are, quote, kids are uh, not artistic enough, not serious enough, etc. But the way I see it, these kids are speaking to real issues of the current times, issues faced by the youth or by women. For example, Nabila Noor talks a lot about uh, fashion. She's herself, quote, plus-sized woman. And she, is become, she has become tremendous in talking about how women perceive themselves, etc. So they are touching a nerve. They're changing how people see themselves and how they talk about it. So the new technology, the new platforms can open up a space for new voices that tradition, uh, slightly more traditionally defined culture or cultural space might have occluded. So there is going to be a contestation here. I don't think it's going to be a case of somebody, quote, from the West or from the Islamicized Islamic Middle East or from Malaysia or somewhere else, even with a strong Bangladesh diaspora being able to uh, only dictate and shape uh, the form or the contents uh, shaped by those new forms, because Bangladeshis on ground will also be speaking to it and there is going to be a give and take. Do you have any views on this, Laura? Yes, I would like just to add that uh, once we would like to, uh, I mean, to project our individuality, uh, the trend is that uh, image comes at the floor. You know, it means that not the nature, the original uh, oneself a person, however, the image, how he or she projects and would like to project itself to the uh, more broader audience. And with this comes uh, fake, uh, some elements of that, starting from avatar is different than one the person would like to be another one and uh, to see uh, oneself as uh, some star or whatever. And uh, this is so visible from the social networks. And the other point is element is that um, with this comes uh, the elements of how we uh, relate oneself, how we um, project ourselves to as a part of our own culture were no, no longer uh, the representatives of our own culture, however, a part of the global uh, community as well. And this is a dual collision creates a bit of... Okay, of, now uh, before we just, before we wind up, a quick question and each of you get a minute to answer it. Uh, technology also ensures that there is no state intervention or you can circumvent state intervention in issues to do with culture, would you be supportive of that idea? Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I think A, it's possible and B, we want an environment where it is more possible. From what I've heard, uh, I'm not an expert to speak on this, but it may be far less possible in, say, a country like China than it is in relatively more open societies. But societies which allows this dynamism to play out, I think, will be healthier and stronger in the long term, especially in terms of that contestation of inside-outside. Laura? So when it comes to interventions uh, or state interventions to culture, I think the uh, state is a part of culture as well. <laughs> it's uh, perhaps somebody thinks like, uh, like uh, uh, culture is like small uh, element within the more broad state program or strategy. Otherwise, I think, uh, I think personally it's uh, culture which is, has a broader 
um, appeal and brought the background and the state or uh, some other institutions with the political, social, economic, and so on. Uh, others, uh, they are only the part of these cultures, uh, broad culture. From, from this perspective, it's a uh, culture which dominates, should dominate the state and dictate the state. Like Ashish Nadi was telling this as a Roman to the state in his book, that, uh, that uh, it's not the state, it's culture which should uh, show uh, the state how to behave in, in, new, in new world. Well, that seldom happens. I don't think states often behave uh, <laughs> as they are expected to. So that should not be seen as a failure of culture. That's a failure of state per se. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anis. Thank you, Laura. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.